What's up, YouTube? This is the Coder Hero, and we're back with another episode of the Tailspire Beta, brought to you by Bouncy Rock Entertainment. What I want to do today is talk about adapting uh, pre-published adventures and how easy it is to create maps for these adventures. Today we're going to be looking at the Lost Mine of Fandelver. And the very first encounter that you have is called Goblin Arrows. So let's go ahead and create a campaign called Goblin Arrows. Submit. And we will jump right into it. Play. So Goblin Arrows takes place uh, on the Tribor Trail. And as you're wandering through the trail, you see two dead horses sprawled out in front of you. And when you go to check them out, some goblins start attacking you. Now, it does specifically state that there are steep embankments and dense thickets on either side. What I did, uh, what I like to do, is take a look at Goblin Arrows map. Come over here and take a look at like some really well done um, maps like this one right here, right? The Road to Fandolin. So you got these uh, es escarpments here, some paths, trees, and brush. Uh, and so that seems pretty, pretty easy. Unfortunately, you only have 90 degree turns um, right now in the beta. So you're not going to be able to have this nice flowing curve. Uh, so what I'm thinking is we have the trail come in, take a 90 degree turn down, another 90 degree turn this way, and then maybe just have it go off the map, right? So let's dive right in. First thing we need, jump into build mode, bloop. Go to nature, blop. Let's grab some lush grass and let's build a nice giant map here boom boom very nice let's clear out some areas for our road have it come down here we'll have our escarpments right here and maybe we'll do another i don't know 90 degree turn here and out um, what I'd like to do is make the road a little bit bigger than normal. Uh, you can have this grassy road that's just, um, what is that, F 10 feet, right? Each, uh, if you look at the grid mode, I like to consider each one of these grids five feet. So this is sort of a 10-foot road. And that's, that's okay. That's not bad. Um, when you put all of your extra assets in here, though, it starts looking kind of cramped. Uh, especially when you're trying to look around trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this road twice as big. And I like using the T intersection for the grassy road. And you'll see in just a minute what I'm talking about. So let's grab a curve here. And so this is going to come down. So T intersection. And this is going to look a little wonky, but that's okay. Oops. Flip that one around there. Flip that one around there. And we'll just come right along, right to our curve. Flip this on this side, bring it out to here. And now you see we have this nice big road here. And we'll probably put a lot of trees and things here uh, just to kind of keep it so that it looks a little more secluded or just to break it up just a little bit. All right, nice big roads. We'll have a 90 degree right here. And that should be good. Okay, so let's grab our 90 degree turn. 90 degree turn right there. Wouldn't really look, that's not gonna look right. I wanted another T intersection there. T 
key. We'll put it just like that. So you have kind of this dirt road. Yeah, there's a little, you know, grass growing in where things kind of turn, but that looks pretty nice, pretty good. Some people like using cobblestone to create the escarpment. If I put another grass right on top of a grass, you can clearly see like grass and then this dirt. And then if I put another grass on top of that, like another layer of grass, and this looks okay. But what I have found is really cool is if you use tilled earth and you flip it, then you get this layers, layers of dirt here. Uh, and then when you put a grass on top of it, I just think that looks, that looks a little bit better than putting grass in grass. So let's start our escarpment here and we'll do two across and then maybe like two here. Actually, we'll do one, two, three. Let's do three across here. So grab some tilled earth, put it here, put it here. Yeah. And I want these all kind of taller. more tilled earth there and there there and there and then we'll put some grass on top of that and this will just give it a nice sort of I mean it's blocky and it's but I mean that's that's what you get when you're dealing with you know tiles and things what we can do to kind of break this up just a little bit is we can stick another grass halfway in between two uh, two squares, right? So instead of having it perfectly blocked, now we have at least some semblance of, uh, what is that, height? Uh, you know what I mean by height. I'm going to actually add one more additional one right here. All right, cool. So that looks broken up enough. Um, I might add some in the back if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. We'll offset it. So we'll take four and we'll have these come down and out like that. Tilled earth. We want this to be our highest plane. We'll actually add two more up here. And then this will be our lowest, our lower planes. Still getting used to the drag and drop. Uh, then let's add some grass on top of that. And there, and there. Two up here, here, and here. We'll break it up again. All right, that looks pretty good. Right, two escarpments. Now, obviously, if you're coming right around the corner, if you've got some goblins hiding here, and let's go ahead and add our goblins. We got two that are going to be archers. Uh, and let's say they're hiding back here. Chomp and chomp. Right, they're kind of waiting to ambush. And then we have two that are immediately going to come out and try to attack them with claw or with a uh, scimitars. So we'll stick those back here. So let's say we're the heroes and we're down here at the eye level. Obviously we can see, oh, there's a goblin right there. So we want to make this more forest-esque. So let's go back to our nature and let's add some cute little, you know, foresty things add some rando rocks here you know change the position of them maybe have a rock right in the middle of the road there we'll do some more with the rocks uh, we'll put some brush here at the en ends of these and yeah maybe we'll like have a couple growing here then we want to scroll down and we want to get a 
lovely, lovely tree. Let's put the tree at ground level. Now, coming in here. Oh, that tree did not make it to ground level. Let's move that rock over. Let's move our tree. Now, if you're at ground level or even a little bit above ground level, you can't see it right away. Now, as a GM, you're going to go ahead and you're going to hide these monsters, obviously, from the party. Uh, but just to kind of get a little bit more realism, I like to look at where things are. And we'll go ahead and add trees all over the place, right? So we'll put a tree here, put a tree here. Maybe we'll put a tree up on the escarpment, like it grew there and get one here you know just kind of randomly putting them wherever feels good we don't want it to look too uniform but grab some boulders right it's where we have our rocks we can put some boulders here that's cool that's good and then Let's add a few dead trees. Just toss those kind of willy-nilly, as I like to say. Just give a little bit of depth. And then you have this full dead tree, which I, I love this full dead tree. Because it, it's nice and big. It kind of stands out uh, when you're looking from a ground level. Throw one back there. And you can see... You know, this is starting to look more like, like, like a forest, you know, like a, an actual nature scape. There's some other things, there's, this, uh, you know, this other type of dead tree, which is, I don't know, I, I don't really like adding too many dead trees. But let's add some more trees in here. We'll just kind of throw them around. Yeah, put one here. And it says that there's a lot of brush. So, uh, like I said, if, if you look at the map, you have all this brush in between the trees. Unfortunately, right now, uh, what we have is this one bush. And hopefully we'll be getting a lot more uh, assets as we move into closer to the alpha phase. But oh, i put that one on top. So let's just add brush and make sure you, you know, change directions and dimension or uh, orientation so that you don't have everything looking super ultra uniformed. Add some brush over here, you know, flip it over, put some brush here, flip it around, maybe add some here. Anywhere that just looks good. You can also drag and drop, you know, or, or drag to get more. Say like we have a hedgerow right here. And now we've got some brush going on. Uh, this would probably be perfectly fine and ready if you wanted to use it. Uh, that took, what, 13 minutes, maybe 10 minutes without the intro and stuff. So real quick. Uh, what if we wanted to make it a little uh, more colorful? So you can go to props, and I like props, and scroll all the way down, and you have these little pumpkins, right? Little pumpkins just kind of growing all over the place. It's probably used for like a tavern or something, but I just like to throw these in because then it gives it a little pop of color. A little, little pop of color there, right? And we don't want to overdo it, but it's like, oh, cool, pumpkins grow in this region. That's super nice. Oh, when you come right around, you can see this goblin. So let's swap this. Set it there for now. Let's grab this tree and just put it right there. And we'll put this dead tree up here. All right, let's come around the corner. And you can't see, I mean, you can't, you can, and again, this, these will be hidden, uh, but just for some realism. All right, what else do we got? We got some rubble, right? So let's grab some rubble and let's just kind of throw it down. 
maybe some rubble over by the rocks. And let's say some wood cutters had come through here. Uh, log pile, L, 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 gallows, gravestone, log pile. Yeah, I really like this one. So this is like, hey, maybe some wood cutters had come through recently and, you know, they're going to come back and pick up some trees that they had chopped down. Uh, so that's cool. What else do we got? Um, you could do like a whole entire section, like you could clear out this section and maybe make like a little uh, campground where some people were working. You've got these crates that you could set up there, uh, some barrels, there's sacks in here, uh, there's tables, maybe like an anvil or a forge. Any of that would be cool. We're just gonna leave this as is. Okay, so this is kind of the, the setup. They come around and they see two dead horses. Well, we don't have dead horses, right? What we do have is pack mules. So let's say unburdened pack mules. So boom and boom. So there's two dead horses kind of in the road. I can't make them lay down. I don't know if there is a way to make them lay down. If you kill them, they just, like I can go into the GM screen here and like kill it. But if you kill it, it just disappears. So that kind of sucks. So we don't want that. Uh, so we're just gonna have this unbridled pack mule. All right. And that's essentially 15, 17, you know, less than 20 minutes to set up the very first encounter. Save this as a board, All right? Let's rename this Goblin Arrows, okay. And whatever heroes that we have, heroes, let's say in this, uh, in this instance, we've got a barbarian. Because you usually want a barbarian or like a fighter. Um, let's see, we need a healer. So let's go with clerics. Ooh, very nice looking cleric. Uh, we want a ranger, All right? And uh, we need a spellcaster. I think I saw a spellcaster up here instead of uh, mage. I mean, there's a wizard. We've seen wizard before. I'll just throw the wizard down there. These, so these are all nice, big, tall characters. All right. Sweet. So our party's ready. They're supposed to be pulling a wagon, and there is a wagon in here. Is it toward, down towards the bottom? Uh, weapons rack, workbench, war table, stool, wheel. Wooden cart. That's what it is, right? Although, that's not really a wagon hitched up. Like, somebody's supposed to be driving. So, that doesn't really... Ho again, hopefully someday we'll have better assets. But So, that's it. That's... Uh, 20 minutes to set up uh, the very first encounter of uh, the Lost Mine of Phandalin, or Phandelver, excuse me. And this is Goblin Ambush, part one, Goblin Arrows. All right, sweet. In fact, it is go it's Goblin Ambush, not Goblin Arrows. Ambush. Thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and join me in the future for more. I think what I'm going to try to do is build all of the Lost Mine of Phandelver board by board. And then hopefully as we get more assets and can figure out more of the GM screen, maybe I will run a campaign with some other beta users. So thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day. Oh, and happy Easter.